Hello everybody, it's a very hot day today. Um, yesterday I had a little play with this image and it comes on the internet in stages that you can see but I know quite often um, I've had people say to me that they find it difficult to translate an image into an actual picture so I thought I'd put it I put a little video together to show you how you could do this image. I think it'd be lovely to use um, on a card. You could make a greetings card using this image. Um, so I'm going to start off by showing you the things that I use to make it. Now I'm using watercolours today. I may also record one using watercolour crayons. But you could also do it with ordinary crayons if you wanted to. So to start with I'm going to draw using a nine centimeter circle. This is a lid off from cotton buds. I'm just going to do it onto this piece of paper. Now this is a piece of the watercolor paper that I posted up yesterday. It's by a company called Sea White and it's 350 GSM which is a nice weight to use and it's a good student quality. Now there's a website called Art A R T E Saver and I found that C Y to doing a pack of fifty for I think it was fourteen ninety nine. So you've got fifty sheets of A4 paper. So lots of practicing you can do on it. I, I use more expensive paper when I do commissions and for my artwork. But just for trying out watercolours, this is brilliant. So I've taped it down as well with masking tape. And that's important if you haven't pre-stretched your paper. Because if you go all the way around the edge like this, when the paper gets wet, it can still buckle. But when it dries, if you leave it to dry with the tape on, then it will go back flat. So let's draw around this circle to start with. This is a nine centimeter circle. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to create a crescent moon, and I'm going to do that by just moving this circle over a little bit so that we make a, a nice loop for the sloth to sit on. Okay, obviously, we're not going to need this bit, so we can rub that bit out. So now um, the other size and the other size circle you need. This is off of some hand sanitizer, and that's a two centimetre top. And we're going to use that to create the head. Now I'm going to put it just about halfway. So here's the crescent shape. Think about where the circle is. I'm going to put it just above the halfway mark of the circle. And it overlaps onto the moon and also into this space behind. We're just going to draw that. I'm using a B pencil, um, so any pencil really you could use for doing this. Then to create the bottom of the sloth, we're going to use this one again. So we're just going to go sort of near the end of the crescent and then you're just going to go halfway round to do the top part of the bottom and then we're going to come down here to do the bottom part we want to kind of make like an elongated shape circular shape and we just join those up do this quite lightly because we're going to rub those out some of the lines out again now coming from this part here we're going to go over in like a U shape flattened out U to join up the back yeah. okay. now the next thing we're going to do is to start with the front arm and this arm is going to be like a sausage shape so we're going to start in between these two shapes here you're going to start from the top and you're going to come down and we're just going to make it a little bit wider as we get near the bottom of the crescent and then so it's a little bit wider and then back up to the top like that and then this side, you can just see a hand poking out, and that's a U shape. 
Then we want the back leg, and that's another long sausage. So we're going to start from about, let's line it up with this one. And we're going to start about here. And again, you're going to come down, and you're just going to bring it round like this in a long sausage. In fact, it looks a bit like a peanut, doesn't it, in a shell. So we've got all these lines now ready to start rubbing out the ones that we don't want. So I'm going to use a, this rubber. I've also got this one, which is a, a nice fine rubber, and it's called a Tombow rubber. And these come in different sizes. And they're really good if you want to get into small areas to rub out like this without using the big fat rubber. But you can use an ordinary one as well. So we don't want that line. Yeah. I'm going to rub this one out. I'm going to rub the tops of these sausages out because we don't really want these bits on the top. I want it to cut, look like it's coming down from the body. And then the line in between here. If you've got a, pen, a pencil with a rubber on the end, like this one, you might want to use that rubber to get into some of these smallest areas. There we go, just rub that one out. I think that's about it now. Okay. Right. Just bring that round like that. We can make that a little bit more curved, just here. Okay. Now we're going to add the claws. And there's three claws on each of its legs, arms, whatever you want to call them. You can just vary the shapes of them a little bit. Bring them down. Like that, and same do the back ones like that. Okay, now cre to create the face, we just want to do a light line just inside, just inside the edge here. So you could actually use your top again. So we're going to create like a face. So just put it so it's over the edge. Can you see it's just leaving a gap around the top here? I mean, it's going to go around here like this. So it just gives it a little area, um, bit of space to put the face. So about halfway up the circle now, just draw a, a sort of curved line, very, very lightly. Okay. And then we want to draw an eye. So to do the eye, we're going to make it like a teardrop, but on the side, it comes up to the edge. Can you see that? I'll make it a little bit darker so it stands out a little bit more. There we go. And then leave a gap, and then you're going to do one the other side. And take that all the way to the edge, like that. Okay? So like an elongated teardrop. And then just do a little curl. It's like a U-shape in the middle for its nose. And then a bit of a smile on its face. Okay, and then we'll fill this all in in a moment with our paints. Okay, so there we've got the drawing. I'll just go over some of these lines a little bit more so that they show up a little bit better for you. So, here we go. Now, obviously, because I'm using a B, it's quite a dark lead. If you didn't want it to show up so much in your drawing, you could use a lighter one. You could use an HB, or you could use an H, because they're a little bit harder. So, then don't make such dark lines. But I'm just going over these now so that you can see them a bit clearer. Hopefully you can see those now. Okay. And a little bit here. There we go. Right. Now we want to do the background. So the the sky. Now to do this, to leave these white spaces, I used a white oil pastel. If you haven't got white oil pastel, another technique you can do is to paint it and then drop some salt on it. And, but you have to let it dry then before you can carry on working on the other areas. You could use a, just an ordinary wax candle, you know, like you get for a birthday candle, um, just to create some stars. So I'm just going to get my white pastel. These are just a different quality again. Pastels, pastels. 
and um, right so just put some little dots over the background like this where you think you know, like some stars you can have some closer together Maybe all over the background okay now we're going to start adding the paint now as i said i'm using watercolors today but you could do it with crayons and i will do that in a sample of that as well using watercolor crayons so i'm now going to mix up my color that i want to use i'm going to use quite a big brush this one is a size 12 watercolor brush but if you haven't got a proper watercolour brush, it doesn't matter, just use any brush that you've got. Before I start using my paint, mixing my paint, I'm going to wet all of this surrounding area. Because it's very dry today, very, very um, hot, and um, the paper will dry really quickly. So I'm going to add some water all around the shape. You need to be a little bit careful with this. Just all the Get it on really quickly all over your paper, but leave the shape of the sloth in the moon. Okay, you can go over the oil pastel because we've used oil pastel, the water will repel from the oil pastel. Let's go around this side. Can you see that now? Remember, you can stop this video if I'm going too quickly, you can stop it and and check that and do it in your own time. I'm not going to go too close to the floor because we are going to leave like a white area around it. Look at the one that I did before. It's the glow of the moon. You need this white area. So coming all the way across. So we're going to paint wet in wet. And this is quite nice because you can fill up the background quite quickly and the colour will just blend as long as it doesn't dry too quickly in this heat. So it's quite wet, just went over the moon a little bit. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is to add some colour to it. Right, so let's look. I've got um, my palette here, it's a bit messy, but rather than um, mixing the colour, I'm going to actually use a colour straight from the palette. So I'm going to go for the ultramarine and I'm just going to pick that up from the palette and I'm going to just drop it onto my background. And can you see just because it's wet in wet it's just blending in with the water. It's bleeding, what we call bleeding. I'm just going to dot that in around like this. Have a bit of tissue with you because you don't want too much water on your brush when you're doing this because you you just need a little bit of water and you want to be able to pick up that pigment from your palette. So as I say, where you've got your white oil pastel, can you see how it's repelling the paint? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to let that blend across. And I'm going to leave some areas here white. I'm just going to drop that in around here as well. It will do its own thing. Now, I've just used blue at the moment. Oh, as I say, ultramarine. So now I'm going to go in with another colour. I'm going to choose the cobalt blue. Now you may not have all these blues, okay? Just just use what you've got, and if you've got more than one, then just vary it. Or if you wanted to, you could mix the two together in your palette. Um, Just to vary the tone a little bit when you're adding a um, different colour. Now, because it's still wet, the colour will move around and it will fill up some of those white spaces. Okay, 
sometimes it might need a little bit of help so you might need to get some more water on your brush and just blend it around like this if you wanted to create some cloud shapes you just wash your brush so wash your brush squeeze it a little bit so it's not too wet and then you can go onto your paint and you can just move your brush around can you see how it's lifting it off but you need to keep drawing taking that color back to your tissue so it's not too wet and you can create some cloud shapes like that It's like the night sky. Okay. It looks a little bit different on the screen to what it does in front of me. I'm not quite sure it's the way the light is probably. I'm just adding a little bit more water to this just to let it spread around a little bit more. Now we really need to let that dry because if we now go in and start painting the slope then it will bleed into the areas that we don't want it to bleed into because it's so wet. So you can use a hairdryer or if it's a lovely sunny day like today you can just go and put it in the sunshine and let it dry. But it is important to do that. So I'm going to use a hairdryer and I'll cut this bit out because be quite noisy and it, you don't really want to keep seeing me drying my work so I'll just okay right so this is nice and dry now and you can test to see if it's dry using the back of your finger okay the reason we use our back the back of our hands is because obviously our fingers you can't see it but there's like a natural oil on your fingers so if you did touch it like this you put that on your paper and then you suddenly get um, an area where you, your paint doesn't go because you've touched it with your fingers. Okay, so now we've got the whole shape in, we've got the dry background, and we're going to put the colour on the sloth now. So, okay, I don't know whether I should say sloth or sloth, so I'm using both. Um, right, so let's get some colour on here. Now, in my, I'm going to mix this in my palette. And I'm going to do a mixture of yellow ochre. And so I've got I've got on my chart here, I've done all the colours that are in my palette. So this is like a yellow ochre, which is like a dirty yellow. And then I'm going to add in some um, this Hansa yellow. So I'm going to add those two together. Now you don't again you don't have to do that, you can just use a colour straight from your palette if you want to. I'm just going to in here so adding water to my palette now this is a ceramic palette and ceramic palettes are brilliant if you use plastic ones you'll find that the water tends to go into blobs um, and you, you can't mix your colour very well the way to get around that is to use some fine sandpaper and sandpaper your palette before you start painting but I've also found that the ceramic ones are much better so using my yellow ochre, I'm just going to mix it in here. I'm taking paint from my palette and putting it into the well here. And my palette. Okay, then I said I'm going to use some yellow as well. I'm going to use some of that hands of yellow. You could use cadmium yellow, you could use any lemon yellow, any yellow that you might have in there. And that just lightened it a little bit. Okay. Now this time we're not going to wet the paper first. But I'm going to go over the whole of the shape, the moon and the slot. So let's do that. Now we need to work quite quickly because it is, as I say, quite warm. We don't want any hard lines building up. So get some paint on your brush and just go over the whole of the shape. Now this brush is a number six and uh, it's a mixture of synthetic and sable. So it's, it's quite an expensive one. But as long as you get a brush, Major brushes are very good. A company called Major. They do um, very good prices on packs of brushes. And they can find them online. They've got their own website, Major Brushes. And um, 
yeah, just have a look. Finding all sorts of things, different products online, the chart. Um, so much cheaper than some of the shops. And Hobbycraft have been running out of things just lately. So I've spent a fortune on going different shops online and buying new art products. I can give you more information about them at some point. Um, I've just ordered a lot from that website I mentioned er earlier, the Art Saver website. Um, because I just got a bit carried away really. I was quite surprised at the prices. They were so good. So I've, got, I've ordered some watercolour crayons, some oil pastels. And I'll let you know how I get on with them. See if they're, even though they're cheap, you'll see if they work well. Because there's no, it's so frustrating when you go to a shop and you buy what you think is going to be okay. You've probably only spent three or four pound on it. But then you, when you try and use it, they don't work. And I know they say, you know, good workman doesn't blame his tools, but with art, you really do need to have good quality, the best you can afford, really. That's what I would say. Right, now that doesn't look quite as yellow on camera as what I've actually got it um, in real life. Now, while this is still wet, I'm going to mix in some brown in my palette. If you see here, I've got like a brown colour. I think that was burnt, burnt, let me look, burnt umber. I'm going into burnt umber, I'm going to put that in my palette. I'm also going to mix some of the yellow ochre in with it, because I don't want it quite that dark. But if you haven't, let's go back to the reference photo, and can you see the dark areas where the shadow is? So let's assume that this, the sky is lighter here, and it's got dark shadows around his arms, under his belly, under his chin. Okay, so let's put these dark areas in now. So I'm going under his chin. Around his tummy. Around his bottom. And then I'm going to add a bit down here on the blue. When you get an edge like this, you don't want it so hard. Just get some little bit of water, get a damp brush and just lift it like that. And can you see how that just blends it in? Okay. And let's go under his chin here. I'm just going to lift that up a little bit. I'm going to move that paint out. So again, wet brush, go up to the edge and soften that edge. Okay. And then we're going to go on this, this arm, this one here would be quite dark. And over that. So you can build up your layers of paint as well. You could, that's the good thing about watercolour, you can go over it to get layers. So this pet brush is, is good because it goes down to a fine point and that's what you want really. You can use, you don't have to get a really thin brush to get a thin line. As long as you've got a good brush that goes down to a fine point, then you're okay. So I'm going back to my palette. I'm going to use the yellow that I first started with. And it's got a little bit more yellow ochre in it. So it's, it's like a different shade of the yellow that's already on there. I'm just going to go on this narrow bit round the base. And I'm going to bring that down under the chin again. And go over the top where that had that shadow before. I'm going to come back under here. Now this time I'm going down the side of the arm, this front arm. Just go round, can you see like round shape like this? And the same on this one. And down here. Now this back leg and round like that. And there's a little bit of shadow. And then I'm going to go around the top here as well. Just do a bit more on top. Now I've got some sharp edges on here, so I've wet my brush. I'm just going to go up to that edge and I'm just going to smooth it out. Let me just soften that edge. And we can do the same here if we want to. 
I don't mind that one quite so much. I'm just soften this edge. So wet brush, dab, dab on your tissue, and just take that along that edge to soften it a little bit. Okay. Now, the eyes, we need to just go back to our brown that I mixed in the palette. And we're just going to go over the eyes here. You could do this with an ordinary crayon if you wanted to. You could make it mixed media and do the crayon over the top. There you go. Right. Down the back, the back a little bit like that. Drying my brush in the tissue and just softening that there. Okay. Got a little bit here that's led into the lighter area. Now, if there's an area that you want to lighten a bit, so maybe, let's just say up here, I want to lighten this. Again, wash your brush, wipe it on your tissue, so you dab it off there, and then what you do, you put your brush down on the paint, and you just slowly bring that across, and it will lighten it. So you wash your brush again, so you're not putting it there, and then slowly bring it across, and what it will do is lift off some of that, paint that you've put down. Watercolour paint can be moved even though you put it down on the paper. You can lift it off like this using your tissue and move it around and lift it off. You see we're just creating like a highlight there. Okay. Right, so we're nearly finished. If you want to darken it anymore you can go into your brown again and you can go underneath. No. And down here. Okay, I want to darken his claws a little bit. I think I'm going to add some more burnt umber to my palette. I'm actually, I'm going to use it straight from my palette, my paint palette. I'm just going to go on those claws just in dark brown, just to make them a little bit different. Now to do in a fur texture, you don't want the, this to be wet, you want it to be dry. I think it's just about dry now. And the eyes, the face is dry as well. So to create the eyes, we're going to use a black pen. Now you could just do it in pencil if you haven't got a black pen. This is a fine liner pen and it's a 0 0.1. We've just got these two little curves that go over like that to show him sleeping, the sleepy sloth. And then I'm just going to go over his nose and over his mouth. I'm saying he could be a she. I'm also going to go round the edge of the eyes, those teardrop shapes. Right, I think this is dry enough now to be able to put on some of that fur texture. Now again, you could do that with a crayon. Um, I'm going to use some of this burnt umber. I'm going to water it down because I don't want it too dark. I'm just going to do some little marks across this to give the fur texture. It's got some little tufts on the top of his head, so let's put those up first. Like that. And these are a little bit slightly dark and you're going to leave spaces so can you see you're just going to use the tip of your brush right up on the tip of your brush and you're just going to create these marks let's go along the back first and round its bottom and just make them random like that but keep them going in that same direction you don't want to suddenly bring them down we'll do that when we get to the legs just a little bit, just gives it a bit of texture. Okay. And you don't want to make it too dark. And let's come down the arms, the legs, and the arms, the legs. Okay. And then this one. Okay. I'm just going to make this one a little bit darker down here. So it looks like a V shadow. 
Okay, I think we've just about finished now. I'm just going back to my yellow though. I just want to neaten up this edge down here. Now you, you can build up your colour and get your different shades by going over the top with the same colour that you started with when, when it's dry. And it just adds another layer over the top and it will darken it rather than going in with a dark colour over the top. So can you see I'm just going into this with the same yellow but where the original colour, if I leave that, it will stay lighter. Okay, I'm just going to move the camera down, see if you can see that a little bit closer. Focuses. Okay. Um, there we go. Right. I'll hold it up to the camera now so you can see what we've done. Right. So, I'm just moving. So here's the finished picture. As I say, I think it would be quite nice to create a card using that for somebody that likes sloth. So I hope you enjoy doing that. If you do, I'd love to see some of your pictures. If you can get your parents to take just put, take a photo of it and send it to me, you can either do it through my website or you could do it on my Facebook page, which is Sandra Costello Artist. Or Art Club for Beginners. I've got a new page now where I'm, I'm putting all these things on. Art Club for Beginners on Facebook, for those of you that can get to it. If not, just ask your parents to look out for it. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.